guys, welcome to another episode here of Andrew Upshaw Fishing. You know, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button in that, that corner right there. It's a little tiny red box that you're gonna find in that corner. For everybody that's already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting my channel. You know, I, honestly, I don't know if I'd keep doing this and doing all these videos if it wasn't for y'all. Uh, I really like sharing this message with you and I really enjoy all the great stories I get back from so many people that have had success with the baits and techniques that I've I've shared with you. So I really appreciate that. Make sure you send in all of those. Comment below what you think and tell me if you've tried it, if you haven't tried it. You know, today is a very special episode for me. I'm on Sam Rayburn, a place that I cut my teeth on in a very good big fish fishery. You know, the, the deal about Sam Rayburn is it's loaded with big bass and they've just finished spawning. They're in that weird funky transition between the bank and out deep you know, this can be a very challenging time of year for some people, and it, and it used to be for me until I picked up a popping style bait. You know, the general rule of thumb, if you see everybody these days, they're going to pick up those big Zara spooks, those sexy dogs, the real big topwaters that make a lot of noise, even a whopper plopper, a big whopper plopper. And they're going to go try to cover as much water as they can as fast as they can. And you know what? That's great and all, but there is a certain window, a couple week window, in that post spawn period that that is not the most effective top water to throw and that's when i pick up the kvd splash you know i have a variety of colors and techniques and and exactly what i'm going to do and i'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to catch more fish on this kvd splash right after this we're out here on Sam Rayburn. Historic Lake has a lot of really big fish and right now we're in a really fun time of the year. We're in that post spawn, that funky time when the, the shad might be spawning, the fish are coming off the beds, are feeding up for that summer transition. But you know the cool thing about that post spawn time is sometimes it can be a little difficult. Uh, one bait that I turn to when it gets difficult is a popper. Now, you know, there's a lot of different popping baits out there uh, and a lot of really good popping baits. And when I say popping baits, it has a cupped front of the bait and it's a, a longer set of the body. So if you can see, it has a flatter front. So that's gonna create that popping action. As you can tell, I do have a loop knot tied on that thing. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But, you know, one thing is I wanna explain the difference between a popper and a pop r so you know the historic pop r that has a very big concave front is more of a what i would call like a target uh top water so like you're gonna throw it and roll cast around targets uh isolated bushes pieces of grass where those fish are pulled up the kvd splash like i have here and other ones that are like this are more like your walking style top water that i like to fish so to fish this thing, I, I keep it pretty simple. I throw it out there and I'm actually walking. Oh my gosh, look at that. that and that's, I mean, that this fish is unglued on it like, as soon as that thing hit the water. But basically what I wanna do when I'm fishing this KVD splash is I'm gonna walk it just like what you would consider a spook or a, a sexy dog, something like that. This fish has it really good. So, if you notice, Splash, the, the cool thing about it is that you'll hook them sometimes just everywhere. But uh, the difference, though, with the, the popper like this is I actually want to walk the dog like you would with a sexy dog. And that's how I catch them. So, I'm going to try to example this without a fish eating it. I don't know if that's possible. But I, I'm actually walking the dog with it. And and you, you so, oh, God, there's another one. So I, you're doing the exact same thing you do with a sexy dog, but a smaller profile. And I feel like those fish tend to eat it better when it's like that. You know, and the thing is, is unlike the fall time of the year, I feel like these fish feed on a little bit smaller shad. 
this time of year and I, th I think that's when that splash pays off the best you know the cool thing about the kvd splash it comes in two sizes there's a little one and a bigger one i prefer the littler one and the, uh, the post spawn you know one of my favorite times of the year to fish this kvd splash is right now during the post spawn when those bass are eating really small fry or eating uh really small shad that are spawning they just don't want that really big bait and right now is when i'm gonna downsize this bait you know we make this KVD splash in two different sizes. We make a big one and a small one. I really prefer the small one in the post spawn. You know, the cool thing about the splash though, it's unlike most other topwaters out there. You know, I, I've talked to you about it before, about fishing it, uh, the difference between that and like a standard pop bar and, and why I kind of put them in two different categories. I, I'm not necessarily using the KVD splash to be a target bait. I'm using it more to cover water. I walk it just like you would a sexy dog, and I, I'm walking it, and I'm tying it on a loop knot. And so the one, the loop knot is probably one of the most important aspects of this popper, this really finesse popper. I want this this line to have free swing ability. And what this does is, when you go walk that bait, when you're sitting here jerking the rod down. You're gonna allow this thing, when you, and you have to do it on slack line. Now that is a big important key, is, is, is popping it on slack line. This bait naturally has a walking action, and you can almost fish it just like you would a sexy dog all the way back to the boat. This is the time of year that that's exactly what I'm looking for. You know, when you talk about technique though, you know, there to me there's two ways to fish a, a KVD splash, you know not necessarily are you just going out there pop 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 you know that to me there's two techniques there's one where i'm fishing extremely slow and i when i'm saying slow i'm just pop pop and letting it sit for a few seconds pop letting it sit for a few seconds that's one technique the other technique though is fishing it extremely quick and i'm talking pop 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 and not really ever stopping maybe a hesitation now and then but you wanna keep that bait moving as much as possible. The, not, the, the rule of thumb for me is I always fish it fast until they prove to me they're not gonna eat it. You always go fast first, then slow down if you need to, uh, because if you can figure them out fishing fast, you can cover much, much more water and you can catch those fish nine times out of 10, fishing it a lot faster than what you actually think you can fish it. If you notice, when fish are schooling, when fish are chasing bait fish, those bait fish are scurrying across the water. Actually, in a lot of cases, they're skipping. You'll see them, the shad skipping out of the water, up and down, up and down. You would be surprised how fast you can fish this KVD splash and, and keep it up on top. You know, that's one thing that I've had problems with other topwater lures is when you get to fishing it too fast, it'll have a tendency to dive down. And, and that is absolutely one of the worst things that can happen when you're fishing a topwater, especially a fast topwater. I don't want to wake the dog or anything. I want to keep that thing on the top, popping just like it's supposed to do. And that's why you fish a topwater, is you want to keep it at the top of the water and fish it fast, pop, 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 pop. And I want to keep that thing skipping across the water. You would be surprised the violent strikes that you get from this. You know, setup is key. One of the big components of this setup is fishing on braid to that mono leader. That braid to mono leader is gonna get you a little bit more of a hook set presence, especially on bigger bass. I, I don't necessarily fish this to try to catch little ones. I, I'm not targeting little fish. If I lose a pound and a half to two pounder, uh, so be it. But what I'm looking for is when I have that five, six, seven pound bass, and that's what you're gonna catch on this, when I have one of those gigantic bass come up here and hit this thing, I want to make sure those those hooks get penetrated on that fish. And if you're using just straight mono or too wimpy of a rod or too wimpy of line, you're going to see a bad uh, thing happen and you're probably going to lose that fish. So braid, I'm, I'm fishing a 30 pound Strike King Tour Grade braid to a 20 pound mono, Strike King mono leader. Very, very short. I'm, I'm doing it more so because I, I want to tie my special loop knot that I tie, and I don't want that front hook to hang in that braid all the time. It'll actually correct itself much more by using that mono leader, uh, but you get the, the presence of braid to get that hook set right. It's a really great way to catch bass. You know, you got to keep going. You know, that's the, the whole art of the top water 
is you don't set the hook until the fish actually eats it. And I'm surprised that fish didn't eat it better right there. Uh, uh, that one didn't get it either. I, he kind of knocked it funny. So that gives me a good sec second to talk about my setup real quick. I use braid to a mono leader. And you see how short that leader is. It's a tiny, tiny leader. But the cool thing about this is it gives you just enough stretch, but the, the really good thing is I can tie my loop knot and my hooks don't hang that mono as, as good. Uh, I'm throwing 30 pound Strike King Tour Grade Braided Line. And my favorite topwater rod is a square bill crankbait rod. This is a, a custom speed stick, a Pro TI reel. But that's my topwater setup. But the most important thing is to walk the dog with this topwater. I mean, and it's something about this really compact bait this time of year that post spawn you you can catch them on a spook or a sexy dog this time of year but i prefer personally a little bit more compact of a topwater and i tend to catch them just a little bit better on that type of topwater this time of year so to break it down for you color wise i keep it extremely basic uh colors i that i prefer this one happens to be sartre shad um I like Sartre Shad. If I need a more transparent bait, I'll, I'll, I'll get a transparent one. Wow. But today, they just want Sartre Shad. I mean, it's definitely the color of choice at the moment. That white body, uh, especially on Sam Rayburn, uh, white you can't hardly beat. I mean, not great big fish, but, you know, the cool thing about the post spawn, though, is at any moment, you can make that cast and catch you a great big one. Uh, but you know, the, the thing, one thing that I really want to make clear when you're fishing in the post spawn, your shad size are not gigantic, they're small, and the shad they're spawning are typically the smaller size. I mean, we're catching them every single cast now on this little deal, and, and I think a lot of it has to do with the, the size of bait that I'm throwing and, and really paying attention to detail out here. Uh, I mean, this thing has to go. And this is exactly how you want them to eat that KVD splash. I mean, look at that thing. Like, you can't even see the top water. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous. But, hey, guys, again, post-spawn, if you're out there, you want to catch bass like this, get you a KVD splash, downsize your bait properly, and you'll be surprised how many extra fish you put in the boat. Thank you again for watching this video. If you get a chance, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to fishing, and hopefully I catch another one. Oh, man. i got to get pliers for this one. This is ridiculous. Oh, man. What am I going to do? Like, he ate it so much. Like, I don't want to cut it off in him. Oh. Wow. I don't know what to do there.